Welcome to Notepad. I'm your host Ibrahim Sani. Today we shall give a very big focus about the streaming wars currently happening here in Malaysia. First up uh, on the belligerence in the streaming wars in Malaysia is an unlikely candidate because Maxis is introducing a video on demand service that lets users watch shows from a variety of streaming services. Starting at just three ringgit a day, the service is available in three packages, a one day pass uh, for three ringgit, a seven day pass uh, for seven ringgit and a 30 day pass for 15 ringgit. These purchases are then charged straight to the user's bill or deducted from their Hotlink credit account. The content will be vernacular including coming in with shows in Bahasa Malaysia, English, Mandarin and more. So the question is on why is Maxis doing this, right? Because when services are ubiquitous, services like telco companies, for instance, they need all the help they can get in differentiating themselves from their competitors, including content diversification. So this is the problem with the streaming wars per se. Players are not just from the likes of Netflix and Netflix, but also coming in from telco players as well, predominantly those coming in from technology players such as Apple, then what's next for them. So next up on the streaming wars here in Malaysia is not quite a streaming service, but still a service that takes up a portion of your wallet away from from watching video purposes. So this is when we want to talk about YouTube Premium and YouTube Music because they have launched in Malaysia as well as in other countries such as Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Philippines and Thailand. Both of them have been launched elsewhere in the world and finally it's our turn to actually face these kind of services. Priced at about 18 ringgit a month, you can actually watch YouTube videos without distractions, ad-free, free from you know the shoppy kind of ads that you're going to watch. But data from Google's parent, uh, sorry, data from Google, the parent company of YouTube, shows that Malaysians watching YouTube is actually lower in percentage against those from other ASEAN nations. So I'm not sure if this is a clear way for Google in Malaysia to grow their revenues here, but maybe it is a step in them diversifying their income away from just being ad money. Next up is of course on how does a streaming company help manage their business better? Because when you have all these players involved as a business owner, how do you see for yourself the best way or the best matrices to move ahead? Netflix CEO Red, uh, Reed Hastings said that subscriber numbers aren't the right metric to track competition. Hastings said that total viewing time was a better way to understand which services uh, companies even better. He predicted that most consumers would subscribe to a couple or to a few streaming services similar to how they buy several news publications. The Netflix has has built itself into a $125 billion company by accumulating global subscribers. One number that is hitting 164 million subscribers when the company announced their third quarter results uh, last month. So how do we as consumers vote with our evenings? So we don't normally consider this right because we normally think about us consumers voting with our wallet and with our money but from a streaming perspective it's time that is the one that we are voting it with so how do we vote with our evenings what kind of mix that we use for all the services that we end up watching these are the kind of questions that we should ask ourselves and if companies pay enough attention and if they want to win this war they better listen to us thinking about this moving along we then have Disney offering their Plus services in the US starting tomorrow. Disney Plus will offer a swathe of old and new Disney, Fox, Pixar, 
Marvel, Star Wars, National Geographic, all of these content is going to be made available in the US for just $7 a month and is going to be starting tomorrow on November 12th in the US, Canada and the Netherlands. And of course, they will be rolling this out in a few countries as well. For instance, November 19 in Australia and New Zealand. It announced Thursday, which is yesterday, that Disney Plus will launch um, in the UK in March uh, next year. France and Germany and Italy coming soon. No news yet for Malaysia. So Disney CEO Bob Iger has announced reaching a distribution deal with Amazon uh, for Disney Plus as reported earlier by CNBC um, and the agreement will see Amazon's Fire TV devices carry the upcoming streaming service um, and Disney Plus has also confirmed that uh, Bob Iger made these comments following the call made yesterday. Now this deal follows Disney and Amazon's discussions over the terms of carrying Disney apps on the Fire TV device and of course one confirmation that has come out is that Disney Plus app will be coming to its Fire TV streaming devices, Fire TV Edition, Smart TVs and compatible Fire tablets and Disney will be giving Fire TV tablets uh, a user, I guess, of a free trial um, period as well. Disney has added support for Samsung LG, Apple, Google and Microsoft in addition to their Amazon Fire TV services as well. On top of this, uh, Disney owned FX uh, will be developing content exclusively for streaming platform Hulu which is also owned by Disney. So they're not just commanding the demand from the platform but from the kind of arsenal of content that they have because Disney has been buying a bunch of companies over the past few decades. This is going to be a really tough uh, comp competitor for the likes of Apple to actually combat because Disney Plus eventually when it rolls out into the Asian market predominantly in in China, in, Ch in Japan, of course, the most lucrative market right now in South Asia, Disney Plus is going to make everybody run for their money, including that of Netflix and Apple TV. We'll go for a break. When we come back, Apple TV Plus.